Christian Boris, uh, who is a Canadian journalist, joining us, just coming back from uh, that area and explaining really what's happening on the ground. Thanks for uh, having me. Um, we'll bring the map so people would get an idea where. Well, specifically, I mean, I know you were in Mariupol. We were looking at Sartana as well, which is a center of uh, Donetsk region's Greek population. But more importantly, it's very close to the front line, was hit very badly. And you had been there right after it had been hit, correct? Yeah, I was there about uh, a few days after it was hit. And I think in the OSCE report, it said that there was about 50, 50 to 100 houses that were damaged. Uh, I believe three people were killed and six uh, pretty badly wounded. So what did you see when you were there? Well, we talked to the locals and, I mean, you see the damage of the houses and they were hit by, uh, even in the OSCE report, it says they were hit by one shells, 152. So uh, houses that were basically totally, totally destroyed or walls just gone. Uh, and you know what, what is uh, interesting for us, uh, because there are so many talks about another broken house, it's already not in use, uh, not for foreign media, neither for foreign nor for Ukrainian, and, uh, but how the people cope with that, that even their sorrows are not, nobody is any more interested in them. How they are getting used to this uh, sad reality? Well, Life, you drive in there and life just goes on as normal. I mean, you you drive in and you realize that this place was just shelled by these enormous weapons recently, and yet people just keep on living. You know, they're walking through the streets. There was one woman that we talked to who said, uh, unfortunately, her grandkids haven't uh, visited her in, in a week because her, her children won't let her, uh, won't let them go there because they fear that uh, shelling can happen at any time. Uh, in the past week or so, there hasn't been any shelling whatsoever. I mean, the lines have been essentially quiet. Well, and this is a major issue for people living near the front, that when there's shelling, you know, people who would deliver food, who would deliver medicine, who would even deliver aid often aren't able to go for a while. They're waiting for things to calm down, so it cuts people off. How did the people react to you as a journalist? Were they eager to talk to you? Were they uh, skeptical? Uh, people aren't necessarily eager to talk uh, in Mariupol in general. Uh, there's... There's uh, people who are pro-Ukrainian who will definitely talk to you, and then there's people who you talk to and they basically just say, I want this all to go away, I just want to live my life, and I'm not for either side. Uh, there was nobody that we really spoke to that was openly pro-Russian, although when you speak to the pro-Ukrainians, they all say that the city is at least 50-50 split. And that's something I'd seen as well. I interviewed the mayor from Sartana a few months ago and uh, also people who had relatives there. They, they'd had arguments about them, you know, some supporting more Kiev, others being very sympathetic towards the separatists. I mean, what, how do you deal with that as a journalist if that piece is missing, if that representation of a view isn't there? It's very difficult. I mean, you want to be able to tell both sides of, of the story, but uh, I mean, you you piece together what you hear from, from the one side and you try to get the other side's opinion, but I mean, it's very, very difficult if nobody's willing to talk to you. I'm very happy you're here speaking about that because it's really very hard to remind about this story. There is something all this, because when it's very intense, it's very easy to describe, you know, this house is on fire, the people are killed, but there is this, you know, this reality which is on a daily basis, it's very hard because you don't know where your town will be tomorrow, to whom it will belong. And uh, my final question would be really, how about the uh, delivering uh, really help or rebuilding other people who need something, get what they need, to what extent? after this year of Well, talks. Uh, uh, actually, uh, going to the military hospital that was there, the, uh, the doctors that I spoke to said they're just, uh, they're in need of anything. I mean, one of the doctors said that sometimes their, their lights will go out. They need things as simple as lamps. Uh, so, and that's a hospital that's right beside Sartana. The people in, in, in those areas that are actually shelled, I mean, they, they basically need anything. So, uh, Christian, thanks a lot, and uh, wish you good luck with all your coverage of Ukraine, as to all the journalists doing that, and that was a nice uh, glimpse about that. Uh, and I mean, just not a nice, I'm sorry, to, to mention that, but the reminder of how the reality it is, while we speak a lot about geopolitics, the rules, the mm -hmm. agreements, but what about how it feels for the people?